uh, give, give stragglers a, another minute or so just to join. We should. There was about uh, 40 odd sets uh, distributed. So uh, I'm hoping that. It's moving the uh, cycle, it's in line. So more will be joining. There's Dave Hasnip. Hi, Dave. Oh, he's. So uh, is Tal joining, Toma? Tal will join us in about 15 minutes, something like oh, that. Great stuff, great stuff. Um, and there's Stuart. Hi, Stuart. Oh, he's coming on audio now. Yeah, thanks for sharing. the. So the link there for the little whiskey shop is, uh, is just in the chat. Is everybody all right? Uh, and since you're actually at home, uh, is anybody suffering from COVID? Are we all COVID free tonight? Are we all good? Yeah. Carl, Carl I'll tell you a funny story. Yesterday I tested positive. Today uh -huh. I tested negative. So I guess I'm negative, but I have to, <laughs> <laughs> I have to test tomorrow again. <laughs> oh, when, when Lorraine and I uh, got COVID back, was it October? Um, we tested negative all the way up to the PCRs. We had uh, at least three or four uh, tests prior to it, and all were negative. And then it wasn't until we had the PCRs that it confirmed that we definitely had it. And there was still there was still times where it was coming in negative for the lateral flows. So you just kind of trust them. But hopefully you're feeling fine. Oh, taste buds are there. Oh, I'm looking That's forward to it. Yeah. Yeah. I know when I had it in October, uh, I lost all taste and smell for at least a week or so. It was a nightmare. Well, not as bad as it can be, I guess, but uh, it still was tough. <laughs> So uh, there's Martin. Hi, Martin. Uh, I think I've said hi to everybody. So uh, I'll tell you what, why don't we start? Uh, I know hopefully there'll be some more joining. Uh, Dan, are you cooking? I hope you're making enough for all of us. Sorry to interrupt. Sorry, Carl. I'm just going to listen along. I'm just in the middle of a brew. A brew? A brew? <laughs> yeah. I've got well, does anybody want a cup there? Because apparently Dan's making putting the kettle on. No, it's it's, it's the new S Imperial style. Oh, oh, it's, uh, it's on it's on the go. That kind of brew. Now we're talking. Excellent. Are we gonna get some of that posted over to Liverpool? <laughs> well, that there, there's your uh, craft ale distilled whiskey. Wow. Oh yes. Oh yeah. Okay, Dan, you're you're allowed. You can go carry yeah. on doing I'm your just, magic. I'm gonna listen listen and, and craft. Brilliant. Excellent. <laughs> so um well, welcome to, to everybody that's joined us so far. Uh, like I say, there's gonna be possibly a few people uh, still joining and things. I know about uh, uh, there was about 40 or so sets uh, sent out. So uh, there may be people joining. Please forgive me if I end up having to repeat stuff just for any late joiners. But uh, thanks for joining, and um, we are in for a treat tonight. I'd like to welcome Toma uh, from Milk and Honey. Hello. Hello. Hi, everyone. Hi. Uh, are you just south of Tel Aviv? Is that where you are? Well, I'm living in the north, northeast of uh, Israel. So... There you go. <laughs> yeah, so I'm in the north. Yeah, yeah, brilliant. And I know, I know Shilton is still hoping to pop on uh, after he's finished at the Southport Whiskey Festival. So we might right. see Shelton's uh, uh, lovely face in the very near future as well. And then you said uh, Tal might be joining as well. So Toma, I don't know if you want to, do you want to give an, a bit of an introduction of what you do with Milk and Honey and uh, how you kind of fit in and, and how wonderful Milk and Honey is? <laughs> well, uh, I'm head distiller at Milk and Honey. MNH, we call it. Uh, the reason for MNH is because we don't, uh, we saw in whiskey fairs, whiskey shows, that uh, it's not so good to call a whiskey in other two names of, uh, of uh, food products. Uh, people used to came at the end to look for the liquors, for the uh, sticky stuff. <laughs> uh, so, no milk, no honey inside the whiskey. We are MNH from Israel. Uh, the name is 
from the Bible, the land of milk and honey. Israel is known as the land of milk and honey. Uh, I'm in milk and honey since 2013, uh, since the beginning of production, actually. And uh, I worked uh, at the beginning with Dr. Jim Swan. Uh, my daughter is here with me. We're isolating, so <laughs> she will disturb us. Geffen uh, Makoe. Hello. Hello. Hello from England and Scotland. No, but Geffen, it's a good one. It's a good one. Uh, okay. 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 Sorry for that. That's all right. Uh, Absolutely no worries. We are isolating here because she got COVID. So uh, I'm here with her. I hope and, she's okay. Uh, but she feels she feels great. All right. Oh, good. Good. Uh, so where were we? Uh, we started uh, with young stuff. We called it uh, young single malt at the beginning. Uh, before it was, it became whiskey. Uh, under three years old, uh, we released some young uh, single malts additions, uh, which I think we tasted here at the, in the first uh, tasting that we did. Yeah. Uh, then at the beginning of 2020, we launched the classic, which we will taste the first whiskey that we will taste. Uh, the classic is the first uh, commercial or uh, the first permanent expression in our portfolio. And uh, we'll talk about it in a minute. Uh, then after that, uh, COVID started and all the launching of the, the rest of the, of the expressions we did uh, mostly via Zoom or online. And uh, that's it. We are here tasting yeah. it. So Toma, yeah. do you mind if I ask what, what what was your background before you you joined? Uh, I just closed Eminem. the door because she didn't close it, and she uh, she watched movie. <laughs> no, no worries. <laughs> hi, hi Martin. Hi Neil. By the way, hi hi uh, George. I think I've got everybody. Hi. All so right. So which one are we on? Uh, no, we haven't started uh, oh. sampling. We're going to start with, but just so that everybody knows, the one that the your sample bottle that's blank. That's going to be the first one, which is the MH Classic. I presume, Toma, that's the correct one to start with. Yeah, of course. Hey, I got something right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, uh, my background is uh, a lot of home distillation. Uh, more than 20 years I'm distilling at home. Uh, now, a little less than I used to, to distill 20 years ago. Uh, then uh, I opened two bars and went into the, the whiskey uh, the whiskey thing and uh, started to investigate, to, to learn how to produce, to learn everything. And uh, then I worked in, uh, in Scotland for a while and oh. then I joined Milk and Honey. Where, where, did you, where did you work, Tomer, in, in Scotland? Where, yeah. Was there particular distilleries that you worked or? I've been for a while in Springbank and for a while in uh, Tomito. Oh, wow. Uh, two great distilleries, which I learned a lot from. And uh, then I joined uh, Milk and Honey in 2013, uh, together with Jim Swan, Dr. Jim Swan. Uh, we built everything. We uh, planned the production. And uh, Jim Swan uh, passed away at uh, 2017. And I'm here uh, to continue his legacy. Could I could I ask what was the biggest takeaway from Scotland and 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 also from Jim? What you know what, what was the biggest thing that you perhaps sort of learned from uh, from that that experience? Well, first, in MNH we are uh, focusing on producing single malt whiskey in the Scotch way. Uh, we are following the Scotch rules, of course. Uh, it will never be Scotch, uh, but it it is an Israeli single malt uh, that's following the, the Scotch rules. Uh, that's because in Israel, we don't have uh, proper re regulation for uh, whiskey production, for single malt production. And we decided to follow uh, the Scotch, which is the most strict uh, rules for a uh, single malt. And I think the most acceptable in the world. 
that's because we from day one we we were aiming global uh, we invested a lot in the distillery money and uh, and a, a lot more and uh, you don't build such a distillery for the Israeli market which is great but very very small uh, so we planned to export uh, worldwide from day one uh, what what uh, more did you ask Oh, it was, it, was there anything in particular that, that was the takeaway from maybe Jim or, or from Scotland? And I think you've kind of well, given from Jim, I took a lot. Uh, actually, from the beginning, he thought he taught me how to produce whiskey and uh, or things that I thought that I, I know. He changed a little bit. And uh, from there, I took it and uh, just uh, continued from there, from uh, what I learned from Jim Swan. Uh, from Scotland, I took everything. Uh, we are following the Scotch rules. We are producing Scotch-like whiskey, which is different in certain things because of the climate, because of uh, the way we are producing. But uh, <laughs> don't, don't worry, we're, we're, we're very informal here. So oh, she, yeah. she's going to break some, any bottle. That's just very cool. <laughs> I'm gonna die if she's breaking any. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. We'll see your tears if uh, if some of those bottles fall off the shelf. <laughs> yeah, so I will become red. Uh, By the way, if anybody does have any questions of Toma, uh, you know, please just show your hand or stick it in the chat box or or, or jump in. Uh, we don't stand on formality as, as everybody who's been before to one of these tastings uh, knows. But, uh, you know, it, don't, don't just leave it to me to ask questions. If you've got something that you'd like to ask, shout. Um, so, uh, by I'll the just, way, oh, go, sorry, go on. I'll Tom. just add that uh, uh, we began production at uh, the end of 2013. Uh, but Milk and Honey M&H uh, started by five uh, high-tech entrepreneurs. Uh, and the, the biggest investor invest, uh, investor is Gal Kalkstein, will might join us later tonight. All right. And uh, yeah, we invited him. I hope he will finish some football game and join us. <laughs> and Geffen uh, <laughs> And uh, that's it. Let's start to drink. Yeah. The classic. Yeah. So the classic is. If you uh, have any question. Please feel free to ask me. So the classic is the one, the, the sample bottle that I've been very lazy and left blank. So there shouldn't be any uh, any of my artwork on the bottle. And that's the uh, the classic. So this is 46%. Uh, and we'll just let Toma um, imprison the child. <laughs> no, I'm joking, obviously. He's not going to imprison a child, is he? Or Toma, are you, are you still there? <laughs> we need to have a little poll call so we can find, out, find a fifth uh, symbol for you to put on these. Well, yes, yes, that, that would help, yeah. I mean, uh, I, I could put like a some sort of uh, negative thing rather than a kiss or a, a, a heart or something like that. But uh, no, I'm, I'm trying to keep it positive. But yeah, it, it's difficult to come up with an additional equally positive uh, symbol. So if anybody's suggestions, uh, there might be a free sample in it for you. <laughs> you could, you could use the diamond. Diamond, that's, yeah, but my artwork isn't that good. <laughs> Literally circle with a spawn in the center, just call it a target or like a Robin Hood or something. Mm, or yeah, yeah, it's a possibility, it's a possibility. But I might, it might get confused with my smile. No, no, it won't, because it'll be so. Anyway, hi, Atoma, uh, uh, back again. <laughs> So, um, yes, so this is the classic, uh, and I don't know if there's anything that you, you want to ask about this, or Toma, if, there, if you want to give us a bit of an intro to it. Of course. So the classic is the first whiskey in our portfolio, uh, maybe the most basic one, and it's it designed to be very drinkable. Uh, it can, can fit most of the palates of the, most of the people, uh, although bottled at 46 IBV, it's very smooth. A lot of vanilla flavors, uh, caramel flavors. And uh, we use here 75% ex-bourbon cask, which are the, 
the cask that we have the most at the distillery around 85% of the cask at the distillery are ex bourbon. We use it a lot in the classic and the classic represents the distillery character. Uh, so it's unpitted. Most of the time we're doing unpitted barley. Only twice a year we are using pitted barley for two weeks every, every time. And uh, the barley comes from you from the UK, uh, from a company called Mantons. Uh, we are moving to, to maturation. And in Israel, we have very hot climate and high humidity in Tel Aviv. Uh, that's cause really quick uh, maturation. And all of the whiskeys that you will taste tonight uh, matured for uh, three, four years, not more than it. Although we have some cask laying down, uh, most of the whiskeys matured for three or, or uh, four years. And it feels much older because of the hot climate. Uh, of course, we are losing a lot of uh, angel share. In Tel Aviv, we are losing an average around 11% uh, annually. And uh, I'll, I'll talk about some uh, different warehouses that we spread around Israel in different climate zones. Uh, but we'll talk about it later before we are moving to the apex. Okay, and I mean, do you find that the classic is fairly, you know, so when you're doing a release, do you find that there is any variations in the different batches that you're producing, or are you ma are you managing uh, to to kind of retain a pretty s stable kind of release? Or well, that that's the big part of my job, and of course. There was some uh, different. There were some differentiations between uh, the first batch and what we what, what you are do, bringing today, uh, but uh, now we we keep it uh, quite consistent, and uh, I think it's much better than the first batch of the classic, but uh, it's still very consistent. Yeah. And I guess one quick question around the the bourbon uh, casks. I mean, do you have a particular distillery that you source your casks from or? Yeah, so I prefer to use mostly MGP casks uh, from uh, MGP from Kentucky, uh, but we are using a lot of Jim Beam, uh, some Woodford Reserve and a uh, few more, but uh, that's most of our casks. Yeah, okay, great. What's everybody thinking? Anybody wanna dive in with their, their view on it? I mean, it does have a fantastic nose and I have to say, Toma, it doesn't, feel like a three-year-old to me or you know like you said it's still a, quite a young whiskey um anyway i'll shut up does anybody want to dive in with their view on it or do i pick on somebody i think you get, you get that lovely citrus spice on the palate it's really nice there is a, a kind of like an orangey yeah as well yeah almost like orange oil or lemon oil yes Really nice. Um, all of the basic expressions, uh, the classic and the three elements, which we will taste two of them tonight, uh, are bottled at 46 IBV. We don't uh, use any caramel addition, uh, no coloring, and of course, no chill filtration. That's why we are keeping it at 46 IBV. Uh, it might be a little bit harsh, but Give it some time in the in the glass to open up. Uh, if you want to add a few drops of water, it's it does very good to the whiskey. It opens flavors, and I really recommend it. So just in case anybody, because I think Chris, you've managed to come in. Thank God you've managed to make it. <laughs> uh, Chris, uh, we're on the blank um, sample bottle, which is the uh, M and H Elements uh, Classic. Lovely, thank you very much. Uh, Neil, did you get that as well? Because I couldn't remember when. Did you just jump in? Did you see that it was uh, the, the sample bottle? Yeah, the bank one. Anybody else want to put in there two pennies? Anybody not particularly enjoying it? Come on, you can say. <laughs> oh, don't don't right. worry, Toma. If there's, if there's anybody there who's not enjoying it, they'll they'll typically well, tell us. At the so, bottom line, uh, it's very simple whiskey, uh, well drinkable in my opinion, and uh, I like to call I love to call it uh, table whiskey to just bring to the mm -hmm. family. Most of the people can drink it, 
yeah. even with one uh, ice cube. Oh. And uh, <laughs> just <laughs> everyone can enjoy Tomo. it. Very simple, very sweet. I think this was the whiskey that first, you know, after the new mate tasting the Carl did, this was the one that I obviously bought first. And then I bought all the elements. But you, you know what? It's fantastic. I think it's a disservice saying it's a table whiskey. I also, I mean, it's it's a rounded, it's a, it's a everyday drinker. You know, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Not, I don't drink Monday to Thursday. Try not to. Um, but, you know, one, one thing I would think is with the branding, the classic label i just think can be a problem because you look at it and you go oh it's just a classic you know i think it's far better than the name tells you it's going to be well and, uh, and you must find some name for the first uh, yeah. expression so that's the basic and it represents the distillery character so yeah, uh, yeah i think it's might, much better than basic whiskey though that's what i'm i, I mean it's when I had that first bottle, then I started buying the whole range. And, you know, I don't think the elements are, are really better. They're very different in the finishes. But, you know, I think if someone looked at it, I think they need to taste it before they start buying it. And, that, and that's the problem with milk and honey. It's, it's not available everywhere. You know, I'm lucky in London that, that there's a huge amount of shops that stock it. But... I guess these tastings are key to get the name out there because not many people will see it on a shelf and go, oh, let's, let's, uh, you know, it's, it's really good value. I mean, you know, what, 40, 45 quid for classic is uh, people should be buying it. I tell people, you know, you wouldn't believe the maturation for three, four years. I spoke to people in Israel and I did say to them, have you had milk and honey? No, no. What's, you know, so even in Israel, some of the guys that I, that, you know, Johnny Walker drinkers or uh, double black drinkers. They're, they're not tuned in. I think it just needs a, a, bit, a bit of marketing and people will see the quality. Well, we just, uh, we just had uh, Shilton Almeida on board with us. So I hope uh, things will move forward faster in the future. Uh, but he's doing a great job. Yeah, I have to say, uh, bagging Shilton was a was a good move. I, I mean, for anybody who does know Shilton, that's on the group. I mean, he's a great lad, um, and and really good at good at what he does, which is uh, being the brand ambassador. So it was a great move for for M and H, uh, in my humble opinion. Um, I, I second that. He, uh, he Shilton is absolutely fantastic. He made Paul John uh, in the UK big time. Him, him and Craig. Um, and yeah, Paul John were, were absolutely daft to lose him. They really were. But yeah, well done for, for picking him up. Yeah. Mark, actually, this might be a good little spot for you to give a very quick uh, introduction to yourself, maybe if you wanted to. Just, uh, I know you, you, you may not have necessarily had that in mind, uh, but if I stuck you on the spot for a minute, what, do you want to give a quick intro to, to the little whiskey shop? Yeah, no worries. Um, we are, um, we've been going for about four years. Um, started off as my folly, um, literally, uh, and it's all turned into a, a kind of a big fully fledged business that's taking up far too much of my time. Um, but it's, it's great fun. We're based in Stockbridge in Hampshire, not Stockbridge in, in um, Edinburgh. So we get quite a lot of people thinking we're, we're up, in, up in Scotland. We're not. Uh, we're in Hampshire. Um, the shop is, uh, we, although we're a little, we called the little whiskey shop, it was because we started off as a, a really, really small shop. We're now about two, three times the size. We also have a little bar um, in there. We have about 120, 130 whiskeys plus you know, the same number of sort of gins open. Um, so you can come and taste them and the bar. Um, we, 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 we tend to you know, put some really nice stuff behind there. So if we get you know, the spring banks or uh, the likes and we put them behind there because we only tend to get one or two. So might as well get them out for people to drink. And that's about it. Um, there is a discount code for you tonight. Um, I've got... Um, I've got a case of each, at least of the um, of all of the ones being tasted. Um, we are, I think, cheaper than um, some of the big retailers out there, um, not to name one, um, but uh, we are definitely cheaper than them. So just done a price check on them, um, and the the five percent hopefully will uh, add a, add a bit more uh, to that for you. Um, the the link is in the in the chat further up, um, as is a link to our our website. Um, so there you go. That's me. Brilliant. Uh, and why? What? What about a plug for the classic? What? Uh, what have you got that down as at the moment in terms of price, so that people know? Yeah, I think it's 
Ooh, I just, just... Oh, don't worry. I didn't. I didn't mean to put you on the spot. It was just if you knew it. Uh, don't worry about it. Uh, I'm sure we can have a, a look it up. <laughs> Forty two. Forty two ninety five. Yeah, and then obviously with a with a discount code as well brings it even yeah. uh, more. Take it down to, to about uh, around about the forty mark. Yeah. Yeah. Good stuff. Thanks, Mark. So again, I don't know if anybody's got any additional feedback for Toma on the first uh, the Elements Classic. Um, actually, I'll tell you what. I'm just going to pick on somebody if that's all right. So I'm going to pick on uh, Callum and Kate. You, I could see you were itching. You're itching to tell us what you think of uh, of this one. You've had it I before. Think, I think that's me just won another tenner because it's always as you pick. <laughs> <laughs> you, you are going to be first. Um, no, can I just uh, reiterate what um, what Dan said? Um, we've uh, tried quite a lot of milk and honey this year, much of it to do with Shilton. Um, really, really enjoying it. Uh, we find we find a lot of similarities between milk and honey and uh, the Cotswolds um, range, if any of you are into Cotswolds. Um, but they've got the their sort of core range, and we've got that in milk and honey as well with the with the elements where we've got the the sherry and the peated and 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 so on. Um, but the apex ones that we'll try later on um, are absolutely superb. Really love those ranges as well. But what we've got for the classic: um, fresh coastal hint of butter, floral honey, buttery biscuits, toffee sauce, vanilla, um, oily tin fruit, fruit syrup. Um, Nutty, a hint of pepper, white pepper, um, is what we've got down for it. So I don't know if anybody agrees or not. Well, I think to be honest, your notes are even better than uh, Thomas' them. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Cheers. So did you enjoy it, did you say? Did you really yeah. like the class? Oh, absolutely, yes. It's a, re a really good um, introduction. Um, again, I, I don't. I think to call it just a table whiskey or, or whatever is probably uh, doing it a little bit of a disservice. Um, it's, it's more than that, and it's much better than some of the uh, new inaugural releases, for instance, that we've seen in the last year or two. Um, mm. why, why you would spend, you know... 70 or 100 pounds and some of the inaugural releases when you can buy this um from the from the shop for 42 pounds yeah so i mean that that's the the uh, packaging for it and is it just me but it actually feels almost as if it's kind of the even the packet the like the the yellow almost for me anyway i don't know if it's just me but it feels as if it's kind of doing it a disservice even the packaging feels as if it's a, like a cheaper Kind of bottle. I, I don't know. Is it is it me? I think I think it's fair to say the only downside of that whiskey is the packaging. So I don't know, Toma. If any if any of this is actually any use to you whatsoever, the name classic might be doing it a disfavor. And and I think to some extent the the yellow package. Uh, anyway, anyway, we're we're not going to do you any anymore. We're we're not going to pick on you anymore, Toma. It's a other than to say that actually. It's a damn fine whiskey. I'm really enjoying it as well. And and if that's the starter. If you look in the shelves behind Tomer, the first box that your eye, oh, wrong way, the first box that your eye sees is the yellow one. Yeah, it really stands on the shelf. Yeah. It stands out. And uh, that's why we pick yellow, of course, uh, also because of the sun. Mm? We use the sun a lot. And uh, if you can see, where is it? There is, there are some. Yeah. Ah, right, okay. Uh, from a shop perspective, I agree, it sticks out. You know, when you've got hundreds of bottles on the, sh on the shelf, yeah, that, having that bright yellow one actually does stick out massively. So I think, uh, yeah, it's quite good in that sense for us. Well, I'm gonna shut up. That's why you guys design it and we just drink it. <laughs> We know that's not true, Carol. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, excellent. Okay, so um, did I, actually I did ask: was anybody not particularly getting on with it, or is every should we do the old thumbs up, thumbs sideways, thumbs down? What's everybody thinking of that one? If if everybody's tried it. Oh, I'm George. I might be coming to you. Okay. 
okay, actually that for, for an opener to, to get that much in terms of thumbs up, Toma, I mean, obviously, you know, you, you, you won't necessarily know this, but on the whole, we're a tough crowd. And actually, <laughs> that's well, not... I'm actually, thank you, George, for saying that you are not uh, so like it, uh, because that's why we are into the element series now. And uh, the element series takes X bourbon and SDR cask, which we use for the classic, and takes it to the next level, next level of, compl of complexity, next level of taste, flavors. And uh, to each element, we add another uh, cask type. Uh, also bottled at 46 ABV, no additional color and uh, no, no chill filtration. And uh, I think we'll start with the red wine. Yep, so that's the kiss, the cross. If you've got my wonderful artwork in front of you, uh, hopefully it will stand out as a nice little kiss for you. That's the one. Thanks, George. Has anybody got these already out and in their glasses or are you pouring them out for the first time? I would definitely recommend if you have got enough glasses to what, what a lot of us tend to do. Yeah, uh, Simon's got them there uh, is, is have them uh, having a little bit of a breathe for, for 10, 15 Anyway, slange. Well, even if we add, we are adding more complexity, more flavors. Uh, we still want to maintain the distillery character inside the element series. So, if we are doing a red wine expression, sherry or pitted, it will not be uh, full of flavor or uh, not heavily pitted, not a sherry bomb, and of course not a very winey whiskey. To so just add uh, more flavor, but still keep it balanced and still keep the distillery character inside. That's the idea be, be, uh, behind the element series. And uh, I'm sure that even George, that didn't like the, the classic, which is great, uh, will find at least one whiskey in our, in our core range portfolio that he will love to buy. Oh, now correct me if I'm wrong, but George, you didn't necessarily say you didn't like it. It was kind of hovering. Yeah, yeah, okay. So, so, yeah, yeah, so, which is... Uh, Sorry, go on, George. So basically, it reminds me a lot of Ockentosh and American Oak, and a lot remind me a lot of Tully Bardeen, where a lot of whiskeys, when it comes to like their you know go to or this is our cheapest or most accessible bottle, will use the bourbon cask. And when it comes to those ones, and when I have them in my mind, and it's worth noting, I'm a I'm a much cheaper drinker than everyone else here, so I know those ones quite well. It failed to really pull itself out of the uh, pack. I, I saw like the tropes and I felt like it didn't quite, it's not a bad whiskey, but when you've kind of been in that wheelhouse, you kind of know what familiar is and it didn't quite ascend that quite for me. You yeah. Know? yeah, fair enough. Well, and that's it. Everybody's, uh, you, you're not wrong. It's it's down to everybody individually, what they what they're going to choose. And we all hear it and we know it. So uh, I, so what's everybody think? Oh, actually, Tom, I was going to ask, now you said red wine. Um, any, do you want to, are you able to elaborate on exactly what kind of red wine casks you're using? Yes, of course. So we are using red wines from Israel, red wine casks from uh, Israeli wineries. Uh, of course, we must use uh, kosher casks because we are kosher. So in Israel, it's not a problem finding uh, kosher wine casks. We have a lot of kosher wineries. And uh, we mostly like to use Mediterranean variety of grapes, so Carignan uh, a lot. We have some ancient uh, uh, grape varieties. Hello, Tal. Hi, Tal. Hey, how are you guys? Yeah, good. Great to see you. Uh, sorry that I was so late, but uh, there was the Tel Aviv Derby today, and my team won. So, uh, yeah, uh, now I'm with you. <laughs> you're, you're allowed. <laughs> Way. <laughs> What was the final score then? Oh, we've lost him. What was the final score? Uh, three to two. Three, three to two. two. <clears throat> Nine. Uh, it was the 93rd minute. 93rd minute. We just won. It was 2-2 two, two, and then 93rd minute. Uh, you know, the big stadium is just uh, 50 minutes, uh, 50 meters from uh, the distillery. So it's a, it's a home game. 
<laughs> Excellent. Well, now you've got something to celebrate. Yeah. So, uh, my son made me a martini, so I'm with the martini now, and then I'm, I'll switch to the whiskies. Good stuff. Well, thanks for joining us, Tal. So um, I, I don't know if anybody's got any questions about this expression uh, or any questions of, of Toma. I'll this... just tell you that uh, mostly I don't really like, I'm not a big fan of uh, wine cask uh, matured whiskies. So uh, here we try to balance things. And uh, I think it's a really nice, well-balanced uh, wine cask matured whiskey. Uh, it's not too whiny. We took some, some notes, some flavors, and it's very balanced over the, the ex-bourbon and STR casks. I'm actually amazed that this is 46%. It actually feels bigger ABV. It's got a quite a warming sensation to the back of your throat. I mean, it kind of suggests to me more like a, a near a 50% or so. So it, it certainly feels much bigger uh, than the classic. Does anybody want to throw in there two penneth on this one? If nobody jumps in, I'm going to pick on somebody, mind. Is there, a, have you got a rough idea of the ratio? Because I, I wouldn't have picked this as red wine in in any world, but there is definitely a sweetness to it. So is, is it 50-50 like bourbon STR or, or what's the, if you're able to say? Carl, I'm going to check if my daughter went into bed and uh, Tal will take it from here. I'll yeah. join you again later. Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, so yeah, Tomer's daughter is, she's, she's positive for the first time in, in her life. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I'll see you, i see you later again. Yeah, no worries, Tomer. Good luck. So, um, so, so Tal, that I was that was um, that was despicable of Toma to to make you uh, have to take over and use that terrible, horrid, horrid excuse to uh, try to get out of answering that question from Chris. I mean, just because he doesn't have a clue, do that kind of thing to us is just. I mean, it, it's it's just unforgivable. So, Tal, <laughs> save, save Toma. Go for it. No, first of all, you know, it's uh, COVID is uh, for me. It's, uh, I had COVID, I think, two two weeks ago, and because uh, he's he's taking care of his uh, daughter, but uh, it was nothing really. I think I had uh, very light uh, hangovers that was much worse than the Omicron. <laughs> so uh, I'm used. Yeah. To so that. what you're saying is <laughs> a little oh, bit of headache, a little bit of shivers, and that's it. Yeah. So yeah. Um, so, so the ratios between the, the question was about the ratios between the, the casks. Mm. Yeah. Um, so <clears throat> again, half of it, uh, around fifty percent, is uh, it's like the same with the with the classic. So it's eighty percent, around eighty percent of bourbon casks, and then STR, it's really fifteen, and then uh, fifteen or sixteen, and then a little bit of uh, virgin oak, and then the rest of the fifty. It's uh, mostly Carignan cask, but bigger, uh, around uh, 300 liters or 350 liters casks. Um, it gets us a whiny note, but not over whininess. We, we don't like very whiny, whiny whiskies. So this is why the ratio is like that. We still have some Cabernet Merlot that, but Israeli Merlots we, with our terroir and our climate um, gets kind of green notes, you know, like green peppers, some green coffee. So this is what kind of what you get in the notes there. It when it gets I think it translated to be uh, earthy, more earthy in the whiskey and then uh, th then then really sweet ones or, or you know overwhelming. Uh, so I think uh, you know it it was the worst whiskey to make. It was the hardest uh, blend to make for us because we don't like uh, uh, overwhelming wine wine cask whiskeys. But I think it's the more complex one. And uh, I think eventually I, I really like this one. I think it's uh, it just one step be, uh, above the, the classic because classic is great. But then you get this one, which is darker, deeper a little bit. And then and you, when you get the wood notes, it's uh, it's wine wood. You know, it's wine cask and not, it's not a whiskey cask. So ratios is about 50-50.
something like that. I, it was a very short answer that I went along for 10 minutes. So uh, I'm still <laughs> having a martini. Much. I'm still, uh, you know, uh, celebrating the game. <laughs> Fair enough. I feel so, like I feel like it's a, a wine. It's like a wine cast whiskey for people that um, don't think that they like wine cast whiskeys. I think this would be a really good one to to get people who always say they don't like wine wine finishes and wine wine um, uh, matured whiskeys because it's so well balanced and it's not like there's it's not overly drying. It's not mm. um, like tannic or anything like that. And for me, it's just. I get so much like on the nose it's so fruity it's like apple loads of apples and caramel toffee it's, it really reminds me of like a tart tatin and um on the very end of the nose actually I get like a, a a bit of chocolate that's almost like nest you know like powdered nesquik or something you know yeah. that sort yeah. of smell but it's even even on the on the palate it's kind of like everything's really balanced there's a bit of heat from like um pepper or like a ginger type heat but it's not overpowering and the chocolate isn't overpowering and the you know the, the sweetness isn't overpowering so i think it's really beautifully balanced thank you i, I think i think it is this was exactly the the aim we were going to and uh, <clears throat> i think that most of the um the casks uh, the elements uh, series are is like that is uh balanced so you're going to taste later on, you're going to taste the sherry, you're going to taste the peated one. So it's not going to be a sherry bomb. It's not going to be a peated, uh, uh, peat monster, smoke monster. Um, when we want to get crazy, we go to the, um, to the apex, to the apex. So, um, if you don't have any other questions, let's uh, let's go for the uh, sherry one. Uh, if, if it's okay for you, can we can we just have a quick check, Tal, as to what everybody thought of that one? Uh, again, do you want to do the uh, the old thumbs up, thumbs side? Yeah. It's a very technical approach we take right. with the uh, US. Uh, as you can tell, it's I mean all the statistics we collect. We crunch, we number all, you know, like it's incredible what we do in the background. So uh, thumbs up, thumbs sideways, thumbs down. <laughs> That's a big one for me. Okay. Oh, Stuart, sideways, sideways. Right. 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 might need right. to ask you as well. Okay. Oh, there's a couple of people who are a bit under. Royston, what did you think on this one? Did you? All right. Okay. Okay. Uh, Dan's making his Imperial Stout, so he's not there. Uh, Dave, Dave Hasnett, what did you think of it? Sorry, right, just uh, sorry, yeah. struggling with the with the te uh, technical business, Carl. Yeah, I, I really like this actually. Uh, I like the first one; it's pleasant. Um, I like the, the sort of the vanilla edge to it. It was, it was nice, but this is a step up. Um, yeah, it's. Uh, I think I agree with you. There's, there's a, a, a sort of real body to it, which I like, which is more than the forty six percent indicates. Yeah, and I, I'm 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 really uh, yeah really impressed with that actually. Yeah. Oh, good. Um, good. Yeah. And, and so really this good. one, is, this one for you is 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 definitely better than the classic. Is that? It's, I, I like the classic, but I think this is a step up. Yeah. Honestly. Okay. okay. <clears throat> Stuart, did you want to elaborate on uh, on your, your your you you were kind of undecided on it? There was a note at the end, the very end of the palette, which I I, I didn't quite enjoy. It was quite a quite sour at the very end for me to be honest with you Carol um, mm. I, I can't put my finger on it any more than that to be honest but it just the, the, the nose was good um, you know the, the initial taste yes but it was just at the very very end I, I, I picked up in something that just just didn't yeah, I, 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 one of those you know re revisit in a week's time might get something different off me but uh, here and now it's, it's sideways Do you, do you I, tend to like uh, red wine matured whiskey or it's it's not something i go for normally but i do have a bottle of the tam one of the tam villain red wine casks open um just now you know and uh, and you know very cheap at the supermarket when they're on offer and, and, and a very easy you know 40 percent very very easy drinker but yeah. you know i i don't think it's particularly the you know the red wine aspect it's it, as i say it was just just something at something the very end, end that, yeah just just didn't quite didn't quite hit the sport for me. Yeah, yeah, fair enough, fair enough. 
I would just like to say I got the sour notes as well, but I liked them, but so I might be a depends on person to person. But oh, I, yeah. I like the sour note, like the aftertaste I'm getting. It's very uh different. Also makes me think of the stuff I used to get from the corner shop after school that just was not good for me. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Did anybody else have anything else to add on that? Or shall we move on to the next one? Are we all good? Yeah, okay. Oh, Carl, what's the price for this one? Oh, yes. Uh, again, I don't know if Mark's able to just, has he got an answer to that one straight away? Or or Tal, I don't know if you know what the UK price um, is. I'm going to have to check. Um, but yeah, I sorry. think Mark... I would, we do it 49. Um, so I think it's, it's not, I think it's, uh, the RRP is... 51, 52, something like that. Yeah. So it'll be sort of uh, 45 or so with the discount slightly more, but uh, yeah. Yeah, 47, yeah, 47, something like that, yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay, great. Usually usually around the world we're, uh, so the classic is is one price and then the elements are uh, just a bit a bit uh, pricier, like 10, 20%, and, but mostly they're all the same. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, we're going to have to take the prices up for the sherry, which you're going to taste next, um, because we have the whole process, which you're going to hear about it uh, when we taste the next whiskey. So, right. Okay. So I think uh, we haven't got the sherry one. It then starts, uh, we've either got, well, the next ones that we've got are the two apex, the rum and the pomegranate. And we've also got the elements peated. So okay. I kind of assumed the elements peated would be the last one that we would have, and it would be one of the apex. <clears throat> uh, so let's switch it. Let's do uh, the peated one because it's very lightly oh, peated one. Okay. Because the apexes, you have the rum and the pomegranate, yeah. which are extreme and very high ABV. Uh, okay. okay. Almost got strength. So let, let's go for the, the, the uh, for, for the peated one. Okay, um, so this so, is the peated elements, and on your sample bottles, it's the one with my wonderful smiley face all across it. So with the peated one, again, um, so the Apex series is, uh, uh, sorry, Element series is um, more about balance. So we took the same ratios as uh, the casks at the, in the blend of the, uh, the classic, and then we add another element which is a 50%. Uh, so you saw the one with the red wine. We had one, we have one with the sherry, which is Oloroso and PX, which is actually, we're making the, the wines because we need that to be kosher. So we're making the wines uh, in uh, Jerez and then season the cast there for one year and then uh, it comes back to Tel Aviv and uh, we age the whiskey there. Um, Guys, you're killing me with Avi Coin. You know we died like two years ago. Uh, um, uh, Column and uh, you know Liver the it's, Liverpool fans. You know yes, Avi Coin. Coin was a great, great guy, and uh, you know he was the captain of Maccabi Tel Aviv. Played for uh, for uh, uh, Liverpool, and then he was just on his bicycle and on his bike, and uh, he just fell, and, uh, and he died. I think two, three years ago, which was uh, was horrible for us. Uh, but our team won. So um, um, so anyway, it's uh, 50% of classic. And then we had another element. Uh, with, the, with the peated one, which is a very lightly peated one, we use around 40% of peated barley when we talk about the, the other 50%, not from the, uh, the base. And the rest is unpeated barley in ex Isla cask. We source cask from, uh, straight from uh, Lafroig and Ardbeg and some other distilleries in Isla. Uh, so it's a combination from when you get the peated barley spirit, it gets you, you know, the, the, the smokiness and some of the, uh, the peatiness and it's more deep when you get the casks, uh, the, the scents and the taste from the Isla cask, you get more earthiness, grassiness. So it's a kind of a combination between a grassy one and a peated one. So when you smell it, I think it's more herbal. It's more grassy, it's more earthy. And then when you taste it, you get the, the maritime uh, scents. I want to say hello to Gal. Gal, say hello. Hello. Hi, Gal. 
Uh, I, I just does. started to talk about the coin and uh, some we great about players. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I yeah, came yeah. in. <laughs> I guess. Gal, Gal is the founder and the owner of the distillery and the current CEO. So uh, cheers, Gal. Great to see you. Um, I, so enjoy it, guys. I guess, I guess we're in the pitted one right now? Yes. Yeah, yes. Uh, element pitted. Element pitted. Yeah. So um, I'm working on it. Try yeah. to get the difference between the try to get the difference between the your scent and the palette. And I think it's uh, as long as we go on and on and we have more and more um, aged pitted spirit, it's gonna get more connected. Because sometimes I feel the difference between the nose and the palate, but I think it's uh, it's beautiful. And as uh, as Becca said, for the um, for the wine casks, for the element wine casks, the element uh, uh, red wine, it's it's one that opens the world for for whiny whiskies. This can open the world for uh, pitted whiskies because it's not a pit monster, and uh, but it's still pity. Cheers. Cheers, Slange. What's everybody thinking of this? I, I, I'm actually surprised at just how subtle the uh, the peat is. Very, very subtle, yeah. Hey, on, the, on the nose, I wouldn't I wouldn't have thought this as a peated whiskey. Yeah, I, I'd I'd agree on the on the nose. I, I would have missed the the peat element to it, but and you can definitely pick it up on on uh, when you're first tasting it but even the finish seems to kind of disappear a little in terms of that peatiness and and it kind of reminds me a little bit of that kind of balance around the the red wine uh finish to it um but yeah i'm, I'm enjoying it I don't, I don't know if anybody's a you know not a peat fan in the group i'm just trying to remember if if somebody here is is definitely not a peat fan and and maybe is finding this quite approachable anybody want to jump in or are, you, are we all Pete fans? I think, yeah, some of the, the, the guys I know who aren't Pete fans uh, aren't here. So uh, Alan isn't on. Um, yeah, okay. So uh, what, what's everybody thinking anyway? Anybody want to jump in and give their view on it? This is my favorite so far. All right, okay. And is it is it yeah. because is it because it is so lightly peated or is it because you're, you're a bit of a peat head and you just love... Any hint of peat? I have a bit of a peat head. Um, I think it's it's because it's, because I'm not getting anything on the nose. When you get it on the palate, it's a nice surprise. Yeah, it is. It is still subtle and it, it's nice. I, th I think it's a very fresh whiskey. So when you taste it, it's not like it's. Tal, we're missing you here. Overpowering by the... You don't hear me? You... Oh, my connection. Okay. You were, just, you, were just, you were breaking up a bit there, Tal. <clears throat> okay. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay. So I think it's um, it's a lot of... Um, it, because it's it's so fresh, uh, so you got, don't get an overwhelming uh, uh, smokiness and, or bonfire smoke. And it's very... There's Shilton. Yeah, Shilton is in the house. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Hello. I'm so sorry I'm late. I just finished the show. <laughs> now, Shilton is getting ready to uh, his, uh, his annual check in, uh, when he's coming to Tel Aviv in two days. You know, in the airport, it's, it's fun. You know, when you, you look like an Indian guy, you come to Tel Aviv, it's going to be fun. <laughs> so that's why I'm all dressed up. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Hello everyone. I hope you guys are having a good time. Of yeah. course, we've got nice whiskey in our hands. Well, that's I, I, I can't I can't pick up any peat on the nose whatsoever. But on the palate, it, it's really nice. But then I guess I'm used to Lafroig, so yeah. <laughs> I can't smell the peat. <laughs> well, well we, we use we use a lot of Lafroig casks. Yeah. So you get some of it on your palate. You do. Yeah, but you do on the palate. Kind of, yeah, it's it's a it's it's like a vegetal one. It's um uh, grassy, very grassy, and get, then you get some some uh, peat notes or some maritime notes, but not in your, in your nose. And as long as we, um, you know, we get our our peated barley, we got it 
I think three years ago. So lot more and more, you, we're gonna get some more and more uh, peated spirit in those whiskeys. So mm -hmm. it's gonna be more connected between the nose and the palate because the nose now, it's kind of very grassy and a little bit earthy, but not peated. And then you get the, this one, but I think it's very surprising that you get, you, when you smell it and then you taste it, it's, it's diff totally different. And uh, is it, is it, that's my favorite so far, without a doubt. Cheers. Do we know what this, the split of the cask types are between the, the unpeated uh, Isla and the peated bourbon? And uh, and secondly, glad you could make it, Shelton. <laughs> <laughs> Just seem to say hello. I have to go head back anytime soon. <laughs> so Shelton is gonna is gonna know everything on Monday. Uh, actually, Tuesday. Monday you're coming. Just coming. And uh, Monday you're gonna be arrested. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, we're going to get you out of the arrest on that. <laughs> now, I just want just wanted to add on to that. Uh, add on to that peated whiskey because I am a big peat fan, and most of the guys know in the group. Uh, this peated whiskey is a perfect gateway to peated whiskeys. Mm. Uh, I would say it's a good. It's not heavy peated. It's a perfect entry into peated. If someone has never tried peated whiskey, I would say try this first and then see where you want to go next. Um, Again, it's very vegetal. It's that earthiness coming in, and it's a it's a it's a lovely dram uh, for a peat lover. It's a summer dram, as I say. It. <laughs> exactly. On, on the nose, it's almost like mezcal. Yeah, and I love mezcal. So yeah. I didn't yeah. think about that, but you're right. Yeah. Almost like mezcal. So I don't know if I could, do you mind if I just have a quick question of Gal? Um, since we've got you joining us, Gal, I know you were, you're one of the founders of the business. Um, and I guess, I don't know if others might be keen to hear just what you, you feel of the business. And, uh, you know, are you pleased with how uh, M&H has, has developed and, and also maybe, is there anything that you maybe, with the benefit of hindsight, might have done differently when you first started uh, m &H? So, I tell you the truth, uh, I never dreamed about such a big uh, business. Uh, when we started, the business plan was so much uh, less, and uh, the idea was so much less, and uh, we thought about a small distillery, and then we got the... Uh, I don't know if you see the picture behind Tal, but we have two uh, two uh, potter distillers, and uh, one of them is a second hand that we bought in like a mistake, and uh, it uh, we, we, it got us much bigger uh, than what we wanted, and then we decided to be international and very big and international one. We decided uh, not to do a small distillery. We decided to do an international big distillery. Uh, I have to say to you that it's a small decision in the financial uh, side, but uh, uh, it's 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 was uh, it's amazing to to look at it. Uh, uh, the banks think otherwise, but uh, I don't ask the bank what to do. Uh, so uh, <laughs> I, I, I think it's amazing. Uh, I I now dream on other big things from the distillery, but uh, I think uh, it's amazing to see how uh, from a land that has no uh, distilleries, no whiskey distilleries, we became a land with five whiskey distilleries and to see what what we've done oh. and and how, how, how it's, it's it's so amazing and uh, and and i think we are doing very good whiskey so um i'm proud i'm just proud yeah and, and, and understandably so i guess gal that, that you you intimated there that you've got some other ideas for for the future without giving away any secrets or anything are you are you able to share what you might think uh, for, for M&H for the future? Oh, yes. Uh, I, I'm a dreamer. <laughs> so I, I, I want to be one day in the uh, biggest uh, distilleries in the world. I think that if, if you look in uh, on other distilleries please, in please the world... Don't, please don't, please don't. We have to sell that. So don't be <laughs> at the biggest one. No, we, we need to sell that. No, no, we have Shilton, so uh, everything <laughs> is possible. <laughs> <laughs> 
So uh, I, I think that the uh, Kavalan uh, way of doing business is, is the way for us to develop. And I think uh, we'll try to do something like them. Uh, so, uh, um, but to be better. So, uh... <laughs> Brilliant. Well, thanks, Gal. Thank you. You, you, should is, all, you should all see, uh, go and look for um, a movie in Netflix called The Zoan. <laughs> Zoan is, is a, really, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a comedy. It's a serious, silly comedy with Adam Sandler, which is, uh, talks yeah. about an Israeli guy um uh, that uh he's like secret forces but it's it's a stupid one he wants to be hairdresser but he always i want to be the best i'm the best i'm the best i'm the best and i think this is very israeli we want to be the best and but it was still very surprising to us uh last year when we won the uh, producer of the year the best uh know about that we didn't submit ourselves uh to the uh, oh tal we're, we're missing you there uh, to the show and uh uh sorry I'm, I'm gonna come back in a second no. i'm gonna try to make it better no i, I want to add on i want to add on to this i mean the whole idea of uh where milk and honey is and you know something which i am I'm, I'm very much into it is because there are two things which defines one is passion and the other is, uh, is risk. We have the passion and we love to take our risk. And that's, that's where you can see the liquid and that's uh, innovation and you know, all the creativity, different ideas coming up, popping in. And that's a tagline that we use, bold ideas. You know, and we always want to come up with different ideas. And there we are today. And there's a, there's a lovely uh, journey ahead of us because we have got different ideas. Wait till you hear the news of the next releases coming out. We are playing around uh, with different casts, which gives us the freedom of doing it um, with, with, uh, with the passionate people that we have behind the brand. Yeah, yeah. Okay, great. All right, thanks, Chilton. Uh, so I guess uh, before you all get uh, too parched and, and uh, wanting to, to dive into the next whiskey, um, did we do the old thumbs up, thumbs sideways? I, I've, I've lost track a little. Uh, we didn't, did we, for this one? So uh, yeah. let's let's have a look. I'm just curious now whether this is going to be a room splitter at all. I have a suspicion it isn't going to be. Okay, so I think everybody's... Oh, Jorgen, I'm coming to you. Dan, oh, yeah, Dan, I see you've got a thumb up there. That's good. Uh, I don't know if uh, Dan Durbin, are you, uh, have you been trying that one while you're doing your MP stout? Oh, that's a big thumbs up. Good, good. Okay. So uh, I think on the whole, Kim, by the way, hi, hi Kim. Glad you could join. Uh, so Jürgen, what do you think of it? Yeah, Carl, first of all, I love uh, milk and honey. And uh, if you had a chance to go to Israel, visit them. I had the pleasure and luxury to do that a couple of years ago. And uh, I know Tomer is on board. So thank you, Tomer, for hand carrying this across the border. Mm -hmm. I was missing this. This is a this is a beautiful cask. I really like this girl. So good work, guys. Um, Pete did for me, Carl. This is lighter than uh, Ardmore. Nothing Isla. And I tried so many different peated ones over the years, Highlands and the English. And I, I really like peated. But the first one we tried, a classic, great red wine. I love it. This one. When you buy a bottle that says peated whiskey, you have some expectations. Uh, if you haven't drunk any peated ones before, uh, I don't know if this will be, I don't know, let down. For me, it's, it doesn't fulfill my expectations or the word peated. I know what, what honey, milk and honey try to do. Um, I do like it, but this one doesn't work for me, sorry. Yeah, and I, I, I understand where you're coming from in terms of, you know, if you are a bit of a peat head like myself, I am. Um, but what I, what I think is interesting about this is that it actually is a bit of a gateway to peat. So maybe that's not what we, you know, and I, I understand exactly where you're coming from. But for me, I think like if I was doing a tasting with, with you know, more of an introductory tasting, and I was a bit concerned about lobbing uh, somebody straight at Lefroig, for example. Uh, 
you might start with something like this to see if that kind of is their thing and they they could develop into a bigger peat. So yeah, I, I understand, you know, from my point of view, it's it's not a peated, uh, you know, it's not one that I would go to for peat, uh, but I, I think it might be a great uh, gateway uh, whiskey for, for getting into it. But I understand where you're coming from. Uh, so uh, I'm going to pick on uh, Dan. Dan, since you're laughing and I saw the little uh, reference to the film there. So Danny, what are you thinking of it? The, the peated. Yeah. To be honest, it's probably my favourite of the three. Um, if you sip in it, just the peated itself, you don't really notice the peat that much. But if you go back to the red wine, if you've got any left, and go between the two you do notice quite a substantial peak difference but yeah. I, it's quite a, a comfortable whiskey i enjoy it yeah okay good excellent uh, I, I mentioned some of the similarities uh, merlin on about um the milk and honey and cotswolds and we've got that in this one as well because cotswolds peated is um the unpeated spirit in uh, peated casks so you're just getting that sort of lightly peated um not a um, you know, heavy Lagavulin like Lafroy peat bomb type thing, but it's it's again, this is really pleasant, drinkable, really nice. Enjoy it. Yeah, I don't find this so much peated. Is is it's full bodied, chewy? You know, it, it's it's got some character in there. It does kind of fit nicely with particularly well. In fact, both the classics that we've had, oh, sorry, the classic and the uh, the red wine. It does have that kind of body to you know to all three of them, doesn't it? Yeah, liking that. Yeah, okay. Uh, uh, so, so, sorry, Carl. Um, yeah, I don't know if I don't know if Tomer talked to, about that, but the way we distill uh, about uh, the very high and short cut we do between eighty to seventy percent, and then the line arms goes. You see behind me. The line arm goes 45 yeah, uh, yeah. degrees down, so you get no reflux. So the oiliness doesn't come from the, the tails; it comes from the uh, from no yeah. reflux. So every yeah. this is why you get the oiliness and the texture you get in the, you know, I know I know that from the new make, but uh, uh, you get it here. So I think the texture is a part of that, and uh, I think as more as we go. We grow older. We, as more we we develop as as a distillery. We are a very young distillery. You get even in this whiskies uh, like the pitted uh, element. You get more connection between the nose and the palate. This is what I was talking about, and it was it's going to be more uh, more peaty, uh, not very smoky, but more peaty. Um, it's it's hard for me to to explain it because English is not my mother's language. But again, it's it's going to be a little bit different. It's going to be more the peat is going to be more in your nose and more in your palate. It's going to be connected, and I think it's it's something that uh, you get. Um, it's not going to be Lafroy. We're yeah. not going there. Uh, yeah. But and when 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 we try with some of our. Uh, a uh, new uh, Apex series, which you don't have in this uh, tasting, and I don't, I don't think you get it in the uh, UK at the moment. But we have a uh, hundred percent of pitted barley spirit in an STR, and hundred percent of pitted barley in a, a fortified wine cask, like a port style cask. And you know, it's amazing. Sometimes we're tasting stuff, and we say. How come we did a, a, a twenty-one year old Talisker in uh, in three years, or a Seneg uh, Ken Coleman in three years? And it's like that because we get it. Everything is more expressive uh, in our climate with our distillery. So it's not. This is something that we still grow in, um, and I think that the elements here is still going to be very balanced, but. As long as I think next batches for the elements, uh, Peter is going to be more connected and more more deep. Yeah, I, actually, you you talk about the line arm in in your, on your still. Did you specifically aim to have that? You know, did yeah. you design it that way? Um, so the the man who designed the distillery was Dr. Jim Swan. So uh, yeah. you know he. He, yeah, exactly. He, he did that. He picked that that shape. Yeah, of the yeah. 
it was it was a fight between uh, the companies that made the, the steel and uh, him. Uh, they talked about the percentage. We looked at them like crazy people. That uh, what are they talking about? But uh, yes, yes, it was designed. He knew what he's doing, and uh, it's so, amazing. It's amazing. Uh, the 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 spirit steel was custom made for us. The um, the wash steel was found secondhand online in Romania in a barn. Really, I swear to God. Um, so it was, I don't know what they were doing that. And it says it's 9,000 liters and it was standing next to a door. So it's, you know, it online next to a door, you know, in Romanians, uh, we went there, it was a barn door. It was a very big barn door. Uh, so anyway, but, uh, Jim Swan really liked the shape, the condition and the, sh and the line arm, uh, of the Romanian one. And he said, it's going to be great for us to try to get uh, this one and then the second one the still one uh the spirit still was uh custom made exactly the same in the same uh, uh ratio so if you look at this one is the is the the second one is the uh, uh the car the car from germany um but again both of them 45 uh, degrees down so that means that everything that goes up goes down to the condenser and then you get some thickness, which we lose because we cut so high, we don't have a lot of oils from the tails. So it's very clean, very fruity, very... Uh, sometimes I think that our uh, new make is like a grappa with uh, pastry note, grappa with corazon or something like that, which is great for us. And this is what makes a lot of... Um, um, I think when you get... We get uh, notes scents and taste from the tails which are sometimes are off they're not very good scents but they help you with antioxidation and they're changing in 8 to 10 to 12 years we have rapid maturation so for us in 3 to 5 years maturation if I'm going to put some more of the tails inside it's going still going to be again kind of stinky um, and so we don't do that, but we gain the oiliness with because of the because of the um, the no reflux, and it's balances kind of balances between that and uh, and, and the scent. So we use very very clean uh, very clean uh, new make, and you know the casks are working, our casks are working twenty four seven. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Great. Well, I'm guessing uh, who wants to dive into the first of our two Apex bottles? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> just, 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 just to add on, the moment Tal mentioned that we bought the steels online, I've seen a lot of people opening up their phone and trying to buy steel on Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. We're going we're, we're gonna to share the, we're gonna share the, yeah, the website. <laughs> So, um, which Tal, which apex do you recommend we start with? So we we rum. The, the you rum have the pomegranate. rum, and you have the rum and the pomegranate. We do, yes. So okay, let's start so with the, the rum. The rum, the rum sample bottle is the one with the nice, beautiful artwork of tick, a tick on your bottle. I hope David Nickel. We're, I hope we're keeping you awake here. I saw that yawn. <laughs> So yes, the one with the tick. So by the way, uh, Apex looks like that. Uh, it's more fancy, more fancy bottles, more fancy. This is this one is from the Dead Sea, um, <clears throat> but we um, just poured myself the rum one, <clears throat> and so it was actually the second edition we actually uh, uh, launched from the Apex series. The first one was a uh, white wine fully matured in Chardonnay cask. And the second one was uh, five casks of uh, rum casks, five rum casks, fully matured. I can tell you that four of them was were, uh, I think, Hampton casks, funky, and, uh, you know, Jamaican one. And one was um, the Cuban one, Havana Club. So four Hampton, one Havana Club. All fully matured, 
and it was 60 something or 50 I, I don't remember which was what was the ABV on that one oh, so the ABV on this one is 57.3 percent 57.3 okay okay but it's uh we we totally sold out of that because it was the second one and then I met this whiskey again and whiskey like Paris and Tomer and me were in the stand and we tasted well, we made a good whiskey, <laughs> you know, it was a, it was a funky one. And <clears throat> when you make uh, a whiskey in a, when you mature whiskey in rum cask, don't forget that we come from a warm country, rapid maturation, our casks are working, but again, rum casks are working ex exactly the same because they are in, in a warm climate, in the in um, Caribbean climate. And when you taste a uh, cold climate whiskey that was matured in a rum cask, like let's say teeling, it's going to be different because the cask came from a, a warm climate and then it closes. You need more time. You need a different, uh, a different time, different climate to get the, the abstraction from the cask. I think that we are the only or one of the, the only ones that uses warm climate maturation from warm climate uh, casks. So this is where you get more abstraction. I think that we can do a lot of, maybe a longer maturation with this one. This was the first one, three years old, and it's a beautiful whiskey for my taste. Uh, Shilton? Yes. Are you tasting anything or are you just? Uh... No whiskey for me today. Okay. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I bet Southport whiskey. Uh, they, they, it's it's. There's just no no whiskey there at all, is there? Nah, nah. They all they, they drank it all. They drank it all. <laughs> I think Steve's picture showed that Steve drank it all. Yeah. <laughs> Steve lately. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. No, the, I I I mentioned in the comment uh, the first thing what I when I know that rum uh, because we are I was just sipping it uh, uh, today. The first thing which comes it's very funky. It's, it, it gets that it, it gets that funkiness in it and which is very interesting because any other whiskey even if it is rum or not when you get that funkiness it gets me straight away i love the a very funky yeah. note on a whiskey it's something different and which i get a lot in this rum i'm really like i'm really liking this one i don't know how you guys are finding it but um it's got a a huge kick to it which is lovely it's got a lovely lovely big flavors hitting you straight away but ones that you can kind of unravel uh as uh, the more that you have a sip of it um i'm going to pick on steve johnson if you don't mind steve do you what's your view of this one what do you think i don't know whether it's because i've been drinking all of the whiskeys and every one i'm thinking is better and better and better <laughs> but this one i think is better again for me um, I can definitely taste the rum in it, or the rum coming through on it. Um, like you just said, the deep flavours are in there. Um, I can't pick them all out, but no. there's a sweetness in there. Um, there's a good mouthfeel. I, I don't know how to describe that either, but the, the mouthfeel is really nice as well. Um, yeah, I, I, I would buy one of these. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> no, that's grand. That's do. grand. Uh, well, the rate is the, great. Thank you. <clears throat> there was a question about uh, the funkiness. The funkiness comes from the hesters of the uh, funky rums. The rums, you know, the, the new age rums or the old age rums, the Jamaican rums with the hesters, with the dandruffs and with the black steer sugars. So this is why it, it sticks in the cask and we kind of taking it out of the cask. So... Uh, Funkiness comes only from the wood. Uh, we don't use anything. It's the same new make, same new make yeah. uh, that you taste from classic and uh, of the red wine cask. Same thing, just just the casks, and uh, it's beautiful. I think it's tropical. It's, you get some tropical notes. You add a little bit of water, you get some tropical notes, and it really is a, a beautiful whiskey. And we we totally forgot about that because we, I think we probably we have one bottle in Thomas' lab. But that's it. And uh, as I told you, again, we were in uh, the Whiskey Live Paris, Paris Whiskey Live, and you know, everyone's speaking French. So we drank and uh, 
<laughs> this is this is uh, one of the whiskies which I mean, if you have your second best query for me, uh, after whiskey will be rum all the time. Yeah. So this is my whiskey. You know, uh, if if you have your if you like your rum, and and your and your whiskey, this is this is your go-to. And there are not many whiskies <clears throat> out there to do rum finishes, so that stands out a lot for me. Yeah. Yeah. And it's a full maturation. It's a it's a three year old maturation in in uh, in um, in rum cask. It's not a finish. And again, it's a difference between any kind of um, cold climate, Scotland, Ireland uh, distilleries that use warm cask, uh, rum cask, than than us or Cavalan or Amrut or uh, Paul John, because. We can get some more fruitiness, some more uh, extract of the wood because of the climate. Because in cold climates, the wood is actually closing because it comes from a warm, a warm climate. So it's a kind of different. Yeah. You know, we, we're just experimenting all the time, and uh, I think it's it's the beautiful thing about uh, the the world of whiskey. I'm just curious. I know how good the the um, the peated uh, 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 expression was. I'm I'm just curious whether like I'm just kind of spitballing, but I'd have loved to have tried this rum with uh, the underlying bit of peach going on as well. Uh, it would be, it, you know, that would make it. I mean, this is a stunning whiskey. I'm really enjoying it. But uh, the peat head in me as well also is crying out to say, oh, I wonder what it, this would have been like if you'd mixed the two. Uh, so, yeah. But anyway, I'm just I'm just kind of next, next year. <laughs> don't worry about it Next year. No, you, 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 we thought about that yeah. <laughs> yeah, just starting Carl there's a long way ahead <laughs> <laughs> yeah but we, we want everything now <laughs> the problem with whiskey is you have to, to wait a have little to bit wait. and uh, the good thing about our climate that you don't have to wait a lot so <laughs> we, we, we believe me we have that we have that experiment so uh, yeah. we, have, we just Yesterday, I was tasting two casks of orange wines, you know, orange wines, yep. which are very, you know, very trendy now. Um, it's, it's a kind of a white wine that you are making like a red wine with a lot of uh, skin contact and extract. And so we had. Ooh, we've lost we have two now. casks that of ex bourbon and then we finished them now. Oh you no, you're back. you're back. You're back. Okay. So anyway, so we have the two casks, uh, which we do the, a little bit of uh, experiment again. Um, two casks that I think we finished in eight months of uh, in inside the uh, uh, orange wine casks, and we just tasted two casks, so different, just one next to the other. We mix them. It's going to be a beautiful whiskey. So, uh, uh, Shifton, you're going to taste it next week if you're going to get out of jail. <laughs> well, if you don't finish it by the time I get there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, one of our problems with it's with um, the the RLA because we're tasting so much. So, <laughs> so, um... uh, so I hope you like uh, the rum cask. I think it's uh, it's a different one. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I, I mean, I, I, I think love... it's up. I think Steve's absolutely right that um, you know there's been a progression in the the drums tonight, and and this is um, certainly for us is by far the, the the best of the night so far, and it's got a super balance between the sort of um, tobacco leather smoke mm. notes in there from the rum, and also the tropical pineapple syrupy coconut um, notes in there as well. It's a fantastic balance, whiskey. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you certainly wouldn't. You, you know, you're certainly not getting hit by the ABV from it. So from that perspective, it's very balanced as well. Um, yeah. Uh, Matt, what, what do you think of it? If you don't mind me asking. Ah, this is a beauty. Um, yeah, I, I really like this a lot. I, I'm getting pineapple as well um, and, a, and a lot of tropical flu, fruits. It's, it's, it's an absolutely cracking whiskey. Yeah. Yeah. No, it yeah, is. I really, I really like this. This is my favourite of the night so far. It's an absolute beauty. Well, I wonder if, if this is so good and uh, for a lot of us here, I wonder whether we're going to be uh, even more impressed with the pomegranate. I mean, uh, that, that, to be fair, from our last tasting, 
when we when we first experienced that pomegranate, uh, what about a year or so ago, um, it was an absolute standout stunner at the time. So I'm just I'm just curious whether this rum <clears throat> one is uh, is is setting us up for for whether or not this is going to be the better of the two apex or or not. I'm I'm now I'm now I'm on tender hooks. <laughs> So I think that, uh, Carl, I think that uh, one of my goals in the, in the discovery was to find the Israeli DNA. And, you know, we, we have the climate, the rapid maturation and our, um, you know, our climate zones of maturing, uh, like in the Dead Sea. And now we have another one in the desert, the mountains of Jerusalem. And we have one, um, uh, one uh, warehouse at the Sea of Galilee, which is, it's going to be beautiful because it is 200 meters below sea level, but still uh, very humid, unlike the Dead Sea. So we are playing with the terroirs of Israel, but one of the DNAs of Israel is the pomegranates. And we are eating a lot of pomegranates. We drink a pomegranate juice. It's, it's a part of our ceremony in the Jewish New Year's to eat a lot of pomegranates. And there is a pomegranate winery up north in uh, Chilton. You're going to be there next uh, Friday. Well, I can't it's... wait. So I, I, as I told you, when I landed at the airport, the first thing I want to try it out is I want to drink a pomegranate yeah. wine because I'm so curious. It's building up so much. I can't wait to go. <laughs> so um, I'm going to... It's so your... bad, so... I'm calling... no, no. I'm going to kill your dream. It's not a great wine. <laughs> <laughs> it's, great it's, okay. it's great it's great it's okay i just want to try it i just want to try the wine i'm so curious about it it's also i want to add that it was one of the best whiskey today at the show uh in southwood oh. uh it was a standout in the in this uh, the show yeah uh, it is it is yeah. it is a killer and i think that uh, we we are growing so every apex is different uh we launched two apexes until now of of the pomegranate uh casks and the first one, we, we just bottled this, I think, on Wednesday. On Wednesday or Thursday, we bottled the first Apex that was already fully matured in uh, pomegranate wine cask and not only finished. Um, those guys, they have their own pomegranate variety uh, that is, you know, it, it was recognized by, I, I don't know, the, whatever authorities. So they have their own pomegranate variety and uh, they're making uh, rosé wines, they're making uh, dry red wines, they're red, making uh, kind of fortified red wine, sweet red wine cast like a port style wine, but from pomegranates, which is great because it's pomegranates are a little bit sour. And all in all, I think that the wines are not, they're, they're very interesting. It's like you say to uh, someone you don't like, and it's very interesting, but <laughs> um, <laughs> they're very interesting. They're very up there. It's very pomegranate-y. I don't very like their wines, but I love their casks. So when we decided to go for that, I, I told Tom, let's bring some casks and hope, really hope that the marketing ideas and uh, um, the core ideas, and uh, I think the DNA would come up great with the with the test, the taste. And I think the first one that recognized that was the Boutique uh, Whiskey Company, and they bottled the a cast that was it was one year old. One year yeah. old. It was yeah. one year and four months because one year was I didn't tell them, but it was one year in bourbon cast, four year, four months in. Uh, in uh, uh, finished in uh, in um, a pomegranate cask, and it was crazy. It was a beautiful cask, and then we just everything we popped as an apex. So it was two editions until now, and then another edition now sold out in a second uh, from our side. You know, uh, so I think that this is so different and you get some sweetness and you get some sourness because of the pomegranate and it's it's a different kind of whiskey and we are so happy uh, that you can taste us uh, this this yeah. kind of apex guys so uh, cheers and i'm going to pour myself one <laughs> good good i'm just going to say kim you 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 you're not wrong uh, peter bagley mr bagley himself is uh, 
ne never arrives without a fanfare. So I, I, it is surprising that you, yeah. Hi, Mr. Bagley, are you well? Yes, good, good, excellent. Glad you could join us. Um, I just wanted to kind of ask, uh, and I think Tal, oh, I thought you'd frozen there for a second, but you're not. Um, Tal, just out of interest, you mentioned that you're, 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 you're playing around with different locations for maturation. Um, are, are you able to kind of pick out precisely what difference you get from the different sites in terms of the maturation? I mean, what are you aiming to get out of each site? Um, yes, of course. So until now, uh, aging was mostly in Tel Aviv. So uh, Tel Aviv's Mediterranean med uh, variety, Mediter sorry, Mediterranean uh, climate. Um, the story is that the, our, our um, distillery and uh, the warehouses is around four minutes, five minutes, six minutes walk from the beach. It depends how, how fast you walk. But um, so that means that it's very humid, very humid, uh, very hot uh, in the summer and winters are more dry and but still winters in Israel and this is winter now. It was 20 degrees today, but uh, I think it's, uh, it can go down in Tel Aviv to around seven degrees. Uh, never snows here. Jerusalem mountains, uh, we have some casks uh, around there, but I think we've been lying there casks for the last six months and it was snowing for the last two weeks and it's just 40 minutes drive from Tel Aviv. So you can still go to the beach in Tel Aviv. You can still drive to 40 minutes to Jerusalem. Yeah. Not ski, but you can play with, uh, with the snow. And the casks are closing in Tel Aviv. They're spreading. Uh, by the way, in Tel Aviv, because of the humidity in the summer and the dryness in the winter, um, so sometimes more ABV goes evaporating and, and sometimes more water. So ABV is changing. And uh, ancient cherry is, is different. Ancient cherry is different. So, yeah. and, and then again, we talk about the Dead Sea. Dead Sea is around, if we talk about in Tel Aviv, it's around 11% ancient cherry uh, yearly. Um, in the Dead Sea, it's around 25% ancient cherry yearly. Very dry. Air pressure is very high. So, casks are almost breaking up. And um, lots of minerals in the air. We lose a lot of, uh, of uh, ancient show, but the wood extract is amazing. Uh, sea of Galilee is just new, so uh, I don't again, know exactly. Again, again, about the Dead Sea, it's 45 minutes from Jerusalem. So yeah. we talked about uh, Tel Aviv, 45 minutes to Jerusalem. Jerusalem, yeah. 45 minutes to the Dead Sea. It's amazing how close it is, it is yeah. and how different it is. Does that yeah, make the, the Sea of Galilee. And yeah. the bottle, though. So you have to understand that it's uh, when you go up Tel Aviv is zero elevation, 45 minutes, you're in Jerusalem, 750 meters above sea, sea level. One hour, 45 minutes, you're minus 430 meters below sea level. So this is just one, um, two hours drive. Uh, sea of Galilee, uh, the casks are new there. So I, I, can't, I can't tell you about, uh, it's, it's yeah. kind of a new venture. Yeah. But the uh, desert is going to be very interesting. Uh, I, I guess the reason why I'd asked the question was whether or not you'd identified any taste variations, you know, rather than just maybe the, the angel share differences. Have you have you recognized, you know, so, for example, you know, if you're putting uh, casks up against the wall and the sea is smashing against it, there's an argument that you're getting a, a little bit more of, you know, saltiness. Yeah. Yeah. To it, that kind of thing. Are you finding that you're getting any different flavor profiles, whether it's sweeter or, yeah. you know, like, I, I don't know if you're getting any of that. I think in, in the Dead Sea, we can uh, actually recognize some saltiness. It's not salt because of the sea. It's kind of uh, what the extreme wood extract. Yeah. It's like it's like aging with whiskey in the microwave, you know. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, so you get everything extracted everything more everything uh you know in high volume um but we get some kind of a saltiness and the woods are extracted it's 
I think it's brom. You know what brom is? It's a kind of a mineral, uh, something to do with that. And yeah. it's kind of, it, I think it's, it's supposed to calm you down. Brom is calming you down. So if you drink the m &H whiskey from the Dead Sea, you're going to be very relaxed, I think so. Uh, like, <laughs> good, good. like in, uh, in malt stock. So keep calm and relax. <laughs> yeah. So Neil, were you asking a question there? I don't know if we missed what you were going to say there. I was just thinking about like the the timing for when you would bottle out the casks, depending on where whereabouts you. Yeah, if, if you are suffering a twenty five percent loss through angel share, whether you would be uh, having to consider different uh, bottling it, times. Is that what you mean? It depend on the time of year and stuff. Like that. Well, we, we, what we do in the Dead Sea is uh, half of the. Half the, half of the maturation is the Dead Sea, and then we get the cast back to Tel Aviv, or or the the other way around. So uh, one year and a half in the Dead Sea, one year and a half in the in Tel Aviv. Either we start in Tel Aviv, or either we start there, and we're switching the cast. We always have twin casts. We always have uh, two bot same bottling date, same type of cast, same size of cast. One is aged in the Dead Sea, one is aged in Tel Aviv, and then we we can, we we actually can monitor the changes. We monitor the differences between the maturation. And it's amazing, and, and I think, please come to Tel Aviv. I will sit at the lab, and I have to show you those things because it's uh, it's going to be crazy to send you all those samples. But it, I think it's it's amazing to see those. That the, there is a whiskey terroir. There is a whiskey yeah. terroir. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, Kim, just to let you know, so the first two that was the blank bottle uh, was the classic, the m &H classic. Uh, and the second one that you'd missed was the m &H, uh, Elements uh, red wine uh, uh, cask, and, and that was the kiss. And the Kim, and Kim, Maccabi Tel Aviv just won the derby, so it's a very important. <laughs> um, I think uh, somebody asked a question, I think, uh, where was it? Uh, Kim, you'd asked Sabra? Sabra. Yeah, the, whether or not the, the... Yeah, no, someone else did. Uh, who was that? Sabra. Uh, really? Neil. Oh, it was Neil, sorry, yes. Yeah. Sabra. I was just having a Google about um, various fruits and stuff in Israel. And, and Sabra. Sabra liqueur sounds quite an interesting. Mix. Sabra's, uh, if I remember rightly, is very orangey and very sweet. That was yeah. back when I was Sabra. young and would drink right. all sorts of stuff. Yeah, Sabra, Sabra is awful. Um, sabra is um, sabra is the fruit of the cactus, and it's when we were kids, we were going with uh, a tin can and a and a stick, just to get those and trying to cut it, and you get so much uh, you know uh, toys in your hand, and I think that Seagrams made a liquor out of that, but it wasn't exactly from from the sabras from the Israelis are called sabras. Sabras is uh, the fruit of the cactus, which we, we say we are sweet inside and pointy outside. <laughs> and this is uh, this is how they call Israelis. Uh, it's a shitty liqueur. I think it was owned by Sigrans, and I don't. I'm not sure if they're still making that, but it's uh, yeah. it was an orange one and an orange and coffee, so two liqueurs. <laughs> Excellent. Well, I hope you noticed that I was being really evil by maintaining lots of chat so that we didn't get to try the pomegranate. And it, it, you're sitting there, let's I go. see you itching. Well, before yeah. we do, just out of interest, let's do the old thumbs up, thumbs sideways, thumbs down for that uh, rum apex. The rum, yeah. So I'm just, I, I'll be, I mean, for me, the, oh, oh. Oh, oh, two thumbs up. Yeah, okay. Royson and uh, Danny. Yeah. Tim, was that a was that a thumb up? Sorry, I missed that. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I think that was every single person. Kim oh, Kim Simon. Uh, All oh, right. With the just Kim. Kim and Becca. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that just didn't quite get me. I, I mean, it is a whole lot better with a bit of water, uh -huh. but I'm not sure that it was the uh, tobacco leather thing. Because I'm not a big fan of that in whiskey, uh, but it was sort of, uh, you know, I'm, I think the jury was out with me. 
Yeah. Give me a bottle and I'll let you know in a week. (laughs) (laughs) Well, Mark can sort you out with a bottle if you want one. (laughs) Well, well, good to know, Kim. For the next tasting with you guys, I won't bring the rum cask. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, no, no. Aiden Aiden won't be happy if there's no rum cask. (laughs) No, I mean, well, that's that's some great feedback there. I mean, that kind of gives you an idea of just how popular the... uh, that Kim, Kim, uh, you know, being uh, the the outlier, I think. <laughs> and Peter, actually, Peter was a bit wavering there as well. I noticed that as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For yeah. me, it's just it's too sweet. I just, I, I don't really enjoy whiskies that are really sweet, and that one's really sweet. I find the nose very interesting, though. It's that sort of um, uh, that that funkiness, that sort of like totally gone beyond ripe banana. Or veg like a gone beyond ripe ripe fruit smell. Uh-huh. Um, so the nose is really interesting, but I just it's too sweet for me. Yeah. Um, and even what, did Ollie, what did Ollie think as well? Is he there? Oh, he's got a migraine, so he hasn't been able to drink tonight. Oh. <gasps> yeah, I know. <laughs> oh, what a nightmare! He's, Sorry, he's Ollie. A nap nap in the corner. <laughs> we'll try and keep him awake. When when I, when I tried the uh, the rum one, it was. No, she was pleasant, um, but consider yeah. Um, compared to the other Apex, especially the pomegranate, um, that just knocked it out the park. And the also the um, don't know whether you've got tonight the single uh, the single cask slash um, the fortified wine. Um, well, Peter, don't say it because we haven't. Don't don't even don't say what what it was that it was really amazing. Don't well, say yeah, I mean, to be honest, pomegranate, for me, pomegranate, re- uh, kind of red red wine on just underneath, Dead Sea just underneath that, okay. and then, then the rum. So with that, let's dive into the pomegranate, eh? Filthy. Filthy. So this one, just in case you don't know, this one is the good old heart sign oh. on your sample bottles. I had yeah, to give it the heart yeah, sign. Valentine's bottle. Yeah, it's the Valentine's bottle. So uh, happy Valentine's to everybody. <laughs> Valentine's. It's great. So uh, the pomegranate wine cask. Enjoy it, guys. Uh, smell it. Taste it. Let's talk about that later. I'll be celebrating my Valentine's Day with Tal, by the way. If you're not going to be in quarantine <laughs> or in... Uh, if you're not going to be in quarantine or in there, in the, in the, or in arrest, so uh, we we'll talk about that later. Why? Why did I pick that date? <laughs> <laughs> I'd, I'd, do I have to drink this? I'd just live on the smell. Yeah, this is amazing. I <laughs> oh yeah, just smell it. Wow. And it's crazy. You you have to come to you, next time, Carl. I'm gonna send you some bottles of uh, those wineries from uh, the pomegranate wineries because it's it's amazing just to see the resemblance. But I think that's it's crazy just uh, to see because we we know a lot of pomegranates. We we eat a lot of pomegranates, and and it's I, I can see the trace of those tannins and the uh, tartness. But again, it's the sweetness, and it's. I think it's it's a beautiful whiskey. Mm. By the way, did I tell you that my team won, or I, I forgot to tell you? <laughs> <laughs> what, what team is it? <laughs> yeah. What What was that? Uh, what was it? Oh, oh, that. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Maccabi forever, Maccabi, Maccabi Tel Aviv. <laughs> was it the new players that? Uh... Uh, after Manchester United again today. So... Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, <laughs> what are you laughing about? Still done. <laughs> so, what's everybody thinking of this then? Because uh, I'm getting from the silence uh, that you're all diving into this with uh, with both feet. 
that didn't quite work but you know what i mean i think the silence is like when you serve dinner and everyone's going oh wow oh. and eating it <laughs> yeah <laughs> I kind of agree with uh, Steve's comments about the uh, about the nose, more so when you add a bit of water as well. What ABV on this one? Oh, the ABV on this one is fifty nine point five. Nine point five. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, a little bit of uh, water inside is going to be better. Uh, I think uh, we we are I think still growing. Already- it's a very unique, unusual dram. You don't find, uh, or I've never tasted something like this before. Um, it, it actually stood out, and it's all the curiosity which gets you into this dram of the pomegranate wine. And the, your, your, your brains are working. You keep thinking of what is a pomegranate wine, mm. and you keep looking for it. It's nice and sweet. Uh, for me, personally, um, at 59% as well, it is very fresh on the palate. Uh, I would have expected a bit higher ABV and getting, expecting a bit, big hit. Uh, of the alcohol, but no, it's very, uh, very fresh and very refreshing. And then it gets the sweetness built up later on. That's a Shilton, just that's me. Shilton, you have that's massive hands. <laughs> <laughs> well, I I am talking to you guys from my phone, by the way. So that's <laughs> the phone. <clears throat> Lovely stuff. What 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 are, you, what are you guys thinking anyway? Um, I mean, actually, I'm going to pick on yeah. Stuart. Stuart, you've been too quiet, so come on, Stuart. What are, what are you thinking about this one? That's that's really good whiskey. Um, <clears throat> that's that's a marked improvement for me over the red wine uh, cask that we had earlier. Um, I, I can't believe that it's nearly sixty percent as well. I, we're not putting anywhere near that, to be honest with you. Again, the, the, the balance is spot on. Um, I, I'd say that about them all, to be honest with you. You know, you, you, you can... It, it almost... If you go back to the first one again, I, I find myself appreciating that even more. Now we've tried, you know, we, we went through the series. Um, that's, yeah, it's, it's just really, really good whiskey. Um, quite, quite happily. Yeah. Uh, Drink two or three drums of that, no problem. Just out of interest, how what's the number of bottles that are available on the Apex? I mean, is it a relatively small batch or? Yeah, most of the it's all small batches. Uh, it depends of the of the release. It depends of the expression, but I, I don't remember it's, this one. It's mentioned. It's mentioned on the bottle, Carl. I think this one is about four thousand bottles or something. It's mentioned oh, on the bottle. Even less, I think. Even less, yeah. Um, if, if, so this batch eight, if, this, if this is batch eight, I think it's two thousand five hundred and seventy. Yeah, it is about that. Approximately. <laughs> Approximately. <laughs> Approximately. <laughs> and ne- never believe Tomer, you know. It's, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, 2,570 to be precise, according to the bottle. Yeah. <laughs> so it's batch eight, okay. And another 20 that we need to drink, so this is, this, like is, that. this is This is your third tasting of Kellum, right? No, no, this is the first, we've never had any milk and honey ever before, as well, you know. <laughs> um, so am I, shall I pick on somebody else? Uh, Actually, Mark from the, the the little whiskey shop, have you had this yourself? What's your view of it? If you have, I haven't. I got sent um, a whole load of the Apex, but not the two you got, unfortunately. So I haven't tried them. I have tried the uh, the does I've tried the um, the, con- the cognac cast and the sherry cast ones, and I, I, yeah, they are lovely. Um, you know, I, I think they they are cracking whiskies, which is why I was more than happy to get them into the shop, um, and I will be getting you know, carry on supporting you massively because I think uh, you're producing some really good whiskey although it's young it's you know it's maturing much quicker same with the you know the pool and the rest of it um <clears throat> so yeah big thumbs up for me good 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 so well, that, was a, that was a subtle hint that you might want to send me some of the pomegranate and the, uh, <laughs> <laughs> rum cask <laughs> so um Chris Chalk do you want to dive in with what 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 did you think of this one um, I'll start with the rum. Actually, I love the rum. The pomegranate less so. Actually, it, it oh, probably right. my probably my poor form of fruit. But I'm getting real black currant notes, which just aren't working for me. But um, look, I love the fact it's 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 doing so well in the room. I think, uh, but the rum phenomenal. Yeah, 
Oh, so the rum would be is would that be your favourite of the night? Yeah, by some distance. Yeah, the pomegranate. Look, it's interesting. I love any kind of creativity in whiskey. Um, just wasn't for me. Yeah, yeah. Actually, just out of interest, if, if anybody wants to put in chat uh, what their views were in terms of their favourite down to their least favourite, uh, by all means, just share away uh, what you thought and then we can get a rough idea as to which we thought out of the group was their favourite. Uh, actually, yeah, that was a good question, Peter. How much was the, is the uh, pomegranate apex, Mark? It's 92. I'm just working out what that is with your discount. Um, All right. It's 92 plus. I think, okay. the, I think the RRP is about 95. Right. So 50 with a discount. Work time. Yeah. This, this was definitely my favourite, I think, tonight. Um, and it, it's funny because it's sweet, but it's not, I didn't enjoy the rum one because it was really sweet. But this, I find that, there's kind of other things going on. There's a lot of chocolate at the end that kind of, um, and fennel, like candied fennel and stuff that balances it out a bit more for me. But what I find really interesting is on the nose, it really reminds me of this drink um, that you get kind of like in Asia called Portolo, which I can only describe as a bit, you don't get it in the UK, but um, it's kind of like Vimto, like this grapey and berry sort of smell on it. Um, and I have never had that in whiskey before, so no, but very grapey and uh, very like flat cola, that sort of, those sorts of things. And yeah, I, I, I really like this. This might well be my second bottle that I purchased this year. Try not to buy any whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is, this is going to be another one of those, but. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. I hear your pain. I hear your pain. But, but also, actually, what's, what's really interesting is we tried this at the whiskey show. So the last whiskey show that we attended in person was the was like uh, 29, might have been 2020. Was that pre-COVID? Anyway, the, what, the, first, the last show before COVID, anyway. Um, and it was kind of like a year or 18 months or something old then, the pomegranate cast. So this has really come along yeah. a lot since then. I think. I think this feels much more mature than the one we tried in the virtual tasting. Of oh yeah, I think, I think I think we 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 had our first uh, uh, Zoom tasting, and your first Zoom tasting was together. I think we that we actually did that, and yeah. uh, it was a, like a one one and a half year old yeah. uh, mm. pomegranate wine cask. It was actually fully and yeah, it's it's different and uh, yeah, it, with our climate, you know, with our we we always say that if you take our news in Israel, it's uh, it's ten years in Scotland. Uh, you get ten years in Scotland of news uh, like you get one month in Israel. So it's <laughs> it's the same with whiskey. It's, uh, <laughs> it's well, different. Look at look at look at look at me and Tal. We look like we are like forty and fifty. We are only twenty five years old. Yeah, <laughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> But I have to say, if, if this is an indication of your journey... I'm 18. I'm 18, by, by the way. I'm 18. I just... You know, I'm celebrating my... Uh, yeah, I can drink so much. But if this is an, uh, an indication of the trajectory from what we tried originally of the pomegranate to where it is today, I mean, it was great. It was a standout <laughs> before. But this is, for me anyway, this is a, this is a big improvement even on that. Uh, so, I mean, hats off, you know, th th this is definitely going in the right direction. It's lovely. Yeah. I think you guys were the first to taste that, uh, to taste the, the pomegranate wine uh, cask. And uh, it's great, uh, you know, we're closing the circle now. Yeah. And uh, it's a beautiful whiskey. And we just bottled a fully matured uh, three-year-old and up uh, uh, whiskey in a... In a in the pomegranate wine cask, uh, just just less yesterday. So, I think uh, we're gonna send you some samples uh, anyway, and uh, I think you're gonna like that. I hope it's gonna get, reach the UK. Yeah. But uh, uh, it's it's we're always you know, uh, you guys, your your club and us. It's we we're reaching. You know, we we're growing with the with the pomegranates as well. So uh, brilliant. No, thank you. And, and thanks for letting us have a try of some fantastic whiskey. I mean, there's no doubt about it, in my view, that uh, you, you're going from strength to strength. Um, so, you know, really love this. Uh, and I guess from I know uh, we've had a couple of votes. Uh, the two apex have definitely looked like they've they've been the, the, the top two. That's for certain. And I think so far we've had five or six, maybe even seven votes 
putting the pomegranate as favourite and then the rum second. And then we've had three, I think, go the other way around. But those two Apex bottles are, are amazing, uh, you know, in my view anyway. Um, did anybody not particularly enjoy the pomegranate? Uh, I'm just curious. Is, or is everybody enjoying it? I think that's every. Uh, so I think everybody's really quite blown away. Royston, how are? You? Come on, yeah, I can that's, tell you're itching. Yeah, all right. Well, I was curious what what Royston, what did you think of it? No, I loved it. Um, I, I mean, I had the Galani pomegranate as well, and I I used to love that as well. So. Uh, I actually ordered the pomegranate before I'd even tasted it because I, I knew I'd like it. <laughs> and, but I ordered the red wine one as well. It would shame I couldn't taste that today, but I've ordered it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I, hope, I hope you ordered it via the uh, the official retailer of the evening. Of course uh, I have, and I got me 5% off, yeah. Good, good. Excellent. <laughs> Cheers, Royce, and thanks. Oh, it was really, really good. Really enjoyed the pomegranate. And yeah, well, I enjoyed them all. They were all really good. But the Apex ones, you could definitely... I think you're like me. We, we like the strong whiskey still, we nowadays. Yeah, we're not alcoholics at all. We don't have a problem, <laughs> honestly. <laughs> Good stuff. All right, cheers. Uh, next, so step, next step to that is actually owning your own shop. Then you're really not an alcoholic. <laughs> it's work. Well, um, maybe for me, the next step will be doing a whiskey festival and then doing a whiskey shop. <laughs> Yeah. So, uh, well, that's pretty much, uh, that's your five whiskies of the evening. Um, I don't know if anybody wants to dive in with any questions. Uh, yeah, I've, I've got a question for, um, yeah, go for Al. Um, was your team playing today and how did they get on? <laughs> <laughs> I, th I think it was positive. Do you reckon, Callum? Well, maybe, but, but might have sneaked a draw. We, we have a we have a shitty season, so uh, we are third place in uh, third place in the the table. But uh, it was a, a game against a Paul Tel Aviv. We are Maccabi Tel Aviv. This is a Paul Tel Aviv, and we hate them. And again, the distillery is fifty meters from the stadium, so it was. I couldn't go to work tomorrow, and you know we work on Sunday, so I couldn't go to work tomorrow if we were losing and. A little bit of uh, sunshine in, the, in this season. So uh, it was great. And uh, guys, I want to thank you so much. It was great meeting you again. And uh, I hope you, you enjoy our whiskeys. And I just want to say some one thing. Uh, Israel is open. The distillery is open. Come to visit us. Uh, it was 20 degrees today. And it's uh, winter. So, uh, oh, stop it, stop it, stop it. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing, You're going to be there next week. No, oh, no, but when, when he arrives, it's going to be cold and rainy. Uh, so, <laughs> really, I'm, I'm going to take the next flight out <laughs> from the airport. <laughs> well, I, I feel as if there should be a new ass uh, uh, tour of, uh, of, of, of the distillery. We, we might have to do, we might have to arrange this. Uh, so yeah, but thank so. you very much, Tal, for joining us tonight, and for Gal and Shilton. I know Shilton, you you're busy as hell uh, at the at the festival as well. So uh, I'm he's, really he's, he's not doing funny. anything. He's not working. He's, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but Shilton, it's good to see you again, mate. It's it always is. A, it is fun whenever you you take part in that. So thank you very much, and Mark as well. Thank you for joining us tonight. I I hope we get uh, some good sales for you as well tonight in terms of. Uh, you know, it's great to support independent retailers. So uh, thank you very much for joining us, Mark. And uh, hopefully we'll get a chance to meet up with you and do some more stuff uh, in the not too distant future. Uh, and yeah, yeah, I'd, love, I'd love to. So thanks for inviting me along. Yeah. And um, right. obviously the pub stays open. The V pub stays open. Uh, so you don't have to every everybody doesn't have to disappear or anything. Uh, but thank you again for everybody taking part, because without you, <laughs> uh, none of this would happen. Uh, so uh, thank you very much for, for buying the tasting set and coming along and taking such a great active part. Um, again, I've been on, on virtual stuff where you sit there and you're just passive and you take stuff in. Uh, you guys always jump in with both feet and, and let us know what you think, which is, which is one of the great things 
uh, that I, I love about uh, meeting up with you. So uh, thanks very much. And uh, keep your eyes open for the, uh, the Indie uh, Love Fest, which is coming on the 10th of uh, September, along with a bunch of other virtual tastings, by the way. So uh, I'll, I'll let everybody know about those as well. Um, so anyway, you don't have to stick around, but obviously if you do, uh, grab a dram if you've got any of yours left. And uh, now the chaos commences. Uh, so dive in, guys. Thanks okay. very much. Guys, I'm going to say goodbye, good, good night, session. and...